a question I've heard a lot lately, and a lot of people have been talking about this, is if I only have 100 or 200 or $300 to invest in cards or to buy some cards, what should I buy? <clears throat> what is the good deal out there? What are the undervalued players? People are like, Harmon Killebrew has almost 600 home runs. Or Mike Schmidt is the best third baseman of all time. Brooks Robinson is the best third baseman of all time. Those guys are undervalued. Nolan Ryan is overvalued because his career win percentage was about 500. I disagree with all that. It doesn't matter how good Jim Palmer was. If Jim Palmer isn't popular, if nobody wants a Jim Palmer card, why would you buy Jim Palmer cards? How good a player is matters somewhat because it contributes to their popularity, but it doesn't make their card more valuable just because they were really good. Burt Blylevin had the best curveball in baseball history, in my opinion. That doesn't make his rookie card a thousand dollar card. Demand is the king of value. Supply matters a little. Demand is king. Popularity is king. This video is gonna prove my point. So stop talking about how good Lou Brock was and Rod Carew was and their cards are undervalued. So suddenly they're gonna go up in value because they're undervalued. They're not because they're not popular. Neither is A-Rod, neither is Bonds. The reason the players that are valuable are valuable is because they're beloved. Those are the cards to focus on. Watch this and I will show you what I mean. So sport card values, they're just not based on how good a player was. Now, there is supply, there is demand, there are other factors, but supply is a small factor and demand is the overwhelming reason why a player's card is worth more than someone else's. So I'm gonna prove this to you by showing you a couple of comparisons. Comparison number one is baseball players. So we have player number one and we have player number two. All right, first up, player number one, a 20-time All-Star, a three-time league MVP, won a batting title, has 2,415 hits, a career batting average of almost 300, and 536 home runs, and over 1,500 career RBIs. Let's compare that to player number two, who had 24 All-Stars, also a three-time league MVP, won seven batting titles, had 1,200 more hits, career batting average of 331, 475 career home runs, and 1,951 career RBIs. So when we compare these two players, player number two was better in five of the seven categories with them tying with the same number of MVPs. So let's look at the supply of their rookie card. Player number one. Their rookie card is a 1951, and in a PSA 3, the population is 257, and that's from PSA. Player number two, their rookie card is older, three years older. It is 1948, and the population of that one is 153. So, do you think you know who the two players are? Well, player number one is Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle's rookie card in a PSA 3, the most recent sale is $15,107.
The other player is Stan Musial. Stan Musial, his rookie card, is just $2,355. So we have two players here, and you could make a pretty decent argument that Stan Musial has better numbers, had a better career. There are twice as many Mickey Mantle rookies as there are Stan Musials, but the Mickey Mantle rookie is selling for about seven times what a Stan Musial rookie card is. Why? Well, let's talk about that. Now, the first thing somebody would argue with me is, well, Mantle has more titles. So that's why Mantle has more value on his cards. Well, my argument would be, well, if it's all about titles, wouldn't Yogi Berra be more valuable than Mantle then? Does that make Robert Ori cards more valuable than Michael Jordan's? I don't think it does. Argument number two, well, people like home runs. So Mickey Mantle had more home runs than Stan Musial. But wouldn't that make Hank Aaron's cards be way more valuable than Mickey Mantle's? Ultimately, the reason that the Mantle cards are worth more is because there is a significantly higher demand for Mickey Mantle. So it's not about who has better stats. It's about who people want. What cards do they want? That is by far the most important part. The demand is far and away more important. Let's look at comparison number two in a different sport. We have, first off in basketball, player number one, a 12-time All-Star. Never won a league MVP, but was a three-time NBA first-team player. This player has the 11th most career points of all time and the fourth most career rebounds of all time. So think about that for a second. Only three players have more rebounds than this guy, and only 10 people have more career points than him. Let's compare him to player number two. Player number two is an 11-time All-Star. Won one league MVP. This player had five NBA first team honors, is 27th most in career points, and 19th most in career rebounds. So when we compare those stats, player number one has more all-stars, player number one has way more points and way more rebounds, similar on first team honors, and never won a league MVP while the other player won just one. So you would think player number one might be more valuable than player number two, right? Well, let's look at their rookie card supply. Player number one's rookie year is 1969. There's just 277 of his rookie card in a PSA 7. Player number two in a PSA 7, there's 1,552. So there are, what, seven times as many rookie cards in a PSA 7 as the player 2 than there are of the player 1. So there's more supply for player 2, and you could make an argument that player 1 has better statistics. So do you think you know who these two players are? Well, player number 1 is Elvin Hayes. Wait, who? Yeah, Elvin Hayes has the 11th most points scored of all time and is a top five rebounder of all time. Charles Barkley is the other player. So Charles Barkley's rookie card is 17 years newer. And not only is it 17 years newer, it's more expensive, even though his numbers aren't as good. So some people would say, well, your argument sucks because Barkley was the better player. Well, Hayes had more all-star games, career points, and rebounds. So was he really better? Argument number two is why my comparison is no good. Well, it's because Hayes had that tall boy style rookie card, and nobody likes to collect those because they don't fit well in collections. Whereas the 1986 Fleer is a very popular set. It's an iconic set, and it's a regular standard size card. 
In about three or four minutes, I'm going to prove to you why that is not a valid argument. Ultimately, the reason why Charles Barkley's card is worth more than Elvin Hayes is because Barkley has a significantly higher demand. He's still relevant. He's well-liked. He's popular. He played in Philadelphia. There are huge amounts more fans of Charles Barkley than Elvin Hayes. It's all about demand. Third comparison, vintage football. We have player number one first, five-time All-Star, two-time league MVP, 27,663 career passing yards, 173 TDs, but 220 career interceptions, more interceptions than TDs. Compared to player two, who has nine All-Stars, almost twice as many All-Stars, also won a league MVP, has 20,000 more passing yards, has double the touchdowns, and just 40 more interceptions. So when we compare these two, the only thing player one did more was win a league MVP once more than player two. But everything else is by far player two above player one. So when we look at these, we compare the supply. What is the pop count? In a PSA 7 of these, it should say 6 there. In a PSA 6 of these, it is 340 for player 2, and it is 329 for player 1. So player 1 has inferior stats to player 2. The supply is almost exactly the same. But let's look at their values. So who do you think these two players are? Well, player one is Joe Namath. Joe Namath, a recent PSA 6, sold for $4,650. Fran Tarkenton is the other player. Just absolutely clear and away has better statistics than Joe Namath. And his rookie card in this brutal black border card, which is very difficult to get in good condition, just $408. The Joe Namath is 11 times more valuable than Fran Tarkington. But T Fran Tarkington's stats are superior. So why is this argument not a good one? Well, you'd say, well... In conclusion, collect what you like, because that's what everyone else is doing. Collect who you like, because that's what everyone else is doing. Don't collect a guy who has good stats just because he has good stats. Collect the popular player that you like. Stop trying to figure out which players are undervalued. It doesn't matter what their stats were. It matters if they're popular. Supply does matter, but demand matters more. There are way more Barclays than there are Hayes, but Barclays still worth more. There are twice as many mantles as there are Musuals, but it's worth five times more. Collect who you like, stop worrying so much about the supply, and buy the players that are popular because those are the cards with the demand, the higher prices, and will continue to go up.